Hey, sister. Hey, sister. Ah. Getting a little sparkling agua. So there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about in, um, on this, what do we call this? Is this a recording? Is this a podcast? Is this just time together? Cause I'm going to eat my lunch. I know we normally, I do have coffee. I do still have coffee, by the way. Um, if you guys can see this, they haven't given me an endorsement, but I did purchase from Starbucks today. And if so this is, yeah. This is supposed to be a live stream, but we're not eligible to like have two people on a stream yet. So we're doing Zoom. So we Zoomy, Zoomy, Zoom. Zoom. We implore you to subscribe or so that we can go live and we can have, you know, your interactions yeah. live on the comment feed. Please, please do, do so for Christmas. If you want to give me a Christmas present, the best Christmas present is subscribing to our channel for okay. you and for us but the most important it's thing it's a christmas present to you and a christmas present to us <laughs> the most important thing though is saying thank you to all of our subscribers so thank you what are you sipping on thank you i've got my glacier mountains oh, also they did oh you can't see it LaCroix. I'm in bed right now. <laughs> You're in bed. So I'm actually, I am actually um, recording this from my new home, me and my longtime partner, our first time home buyers in, uh, we stay in the greater. And so I'm going to be eating my lunch because as y'all know, when we do some sketchy sister stuff, whether it's a, like virtual coffee or we do this like when we're eating lunch, like right now. We also talk through some of our characters and our character development, as well as just our life happenings. So that's a big life happening. Woo! Um, and I'm actually wearing a wig that I wear and glasses. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sucked in my edamame. Hmm. Oh, mommy. I'm not wearing a wig. I don't happen to be wearing a wig right now. Uh oh. Don't. I hope you don't have to heimlich yourself on this episode because no. Um, I'm actually eating edamame, <clears throat> and the reason I wore the neon wig is because she is to me like such a strange character, but she's getting way more reactions than I anticipated so you're gonna say she's getting way more strange as <laughs> she might she might she's supposed to be like an aspiring ASMR person on YouTube but she's really yeah. shy so one of our commenters was like WCF is this or what hmm. WCF is the point of this <laughs> I was like fun hmm. Like WTF is the point of anything on the internet, pretty much. It's whatever speaks to you. So we know not, not every character on here is going to be your cup of tea. But some, yeah, yeah. I will say, people seem to really love the one where she takes a sip of water. Isn't that strange? I think it's just a, like different things are relaxing to people. I put one of the last real housewife up this morning that is getting really good response. Usually she's a very polarizing character. And also we talked about this many times before people cannot figure out that she has a filter on. So they like to insult her. Um, but I put one out called something like how to use your mom's key keyboard to make public comments or something like something like that. And I was scolding people about making public comment before fully processing things. Like if I'm going to comment on something, I better sure as hell have thought through, like, why am I saying this? Why is this, like, is this a triggering response to me? And do I need to deal with this? Or do I really need to let this person know? Is it going to bring value to let them know whatever the hell I'm thinking about, whatever? Yeah. So, but people resoundingly are resonating. So that's, that's good progress for her. Yeah. Um. 
So I'm going to actually go look at this right now because I haven't seen the one that you're talking about. So y'all know mm. me and Kara, I'm Justine. She's Kara. We both run the sketch therapy, sketchy therapy, comedy page on YouTube here, our page. And we are sisters in real life. You're on right now. Yeah. Subscribe if you're not already. already yes. Hit subscribe. Thank you. We're at 120. But I'm going to our channel real quick because often we are both working on developing different characters, trying them out through shorts here on YouTube. And we often aren't always even keeping up with each other's stuff. So it's a great time to actually live react and kind of see what Kara's talking about. So you put this as a short, your last housewife character. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what? I meant to ask, there she is. Oh, am I Mariah Carey? Okay. So yeah. Hang on, we'll get to Mariah because I have a lot to share about my true opinions of Mariah Carey, aka the Queen of Christmas. What? True people, opinion. People may not agree with me or they may disagree with me. It's the same thing if you don't agree or you don't. <laughs> um or you might really be on my side on this one. Kara might not even like what I have to say. I don't know. Ooh. We're gonna get into it <laughs> while I eat my edamame. Kara, I'm just gonna I choose, say, I choose a snack that would really annoy you. The combination. Oh, it's a good thing you don't have a real ASMR microphone at this point in time because it would help? it would be boring. The combo oh of your pink top and your green background and green hair is pretty fire right now, as my children would say. Pretty fire. I hear this? It reminds me of watermelon. No, I can't, thankfully. But maybe I will be able to later when you upload this video. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, the edamame really match. But I'll tell you what else I'm about to eat here for lunch once I get to that. The edamame matches your, all your greenness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you said that, didn't you? Yeah. They're actually one of my favorite snacks, though. You know this. Um, you know, people are starting to drop off like flies at this point. Off of our you're smacking on your yeah well at one you know during the replay they'll just drop it the off drop who off love neon the people who love neon you're not dropping off and i know you're still here um okay so i this is my first time watching this this is a question i had for you today when we talked about doing this um over our lunch today for sketchy sisters have you named her or is she just the last real housewife the last real housewife she doesn't have a name okay yeah. She's like the only character I think we have that doesn't have a name. But she yeah. actually gets some of the most attention. Scared mommy. Oh, she does have a name. Mary Beth Cooter. Yesterday, I made fun of my general facial features. I just wanted to remind you, we all look different. Some people like me choose not to fill their face with shit. You know, some people like to go unnatural. I'm about to put my eyelashes on. You're going to make fun of that too? What, did you steal your mom's keyboard to make these comments? Don't you pull yourself into going to get a job? If I had the time to sit around and make comments like that, I'd have time to become a millionaire 10 times over. B.S. you dumb dumbs. Yes, this is a filter. A very bad filter. This is also a sketch comedy channel. It's supposed to make you laugh, you dumb dumb. Leave me a remark in the comments if you're tired of people leaving their opinion without thinking first. Oh, listen. Okay. So the other day and made fun of my it already has 15 likes. So apparently yeah. people like that or they're agreeing with it. She always strikes me as like a very like classic generation X mom character. I mean, obviously yeah. it's like yeah. embodies the elements of a real housewife, so to speak, from any number of those different versions of real housewives. But um she definitely embodies the kind of attitude that a lot of Gen Xers have, I think, especially about social media platforms, YouTubers, whatever. So yeah. Okay. So you get it. Yeah. So we have that, but do we want to do we want to jump in? Because I felt like you were kind of yeah, you jump right in. Criticizing me like, hey, this is moving slow and people are dropping off while you eat your edamame. Um, no, the sounds, the sounds of it. So 
Um, anything else you want to discuss before we really get into the meat of Mariah Carey and why I wanted to bring her up? No, not in particular. Um, I'm thinking about bringing this character right here with the pink wig on as like a rival, not ASMR, but makeup influencer and maybe doing like story time about different entertainment news that's going on. Okay, okay, okay. I would watch April news. I don't is know. It enough, is it enough that I would watch it for you to make it? Yeah. Yep. Sure. There is. you go. Comment below if you want Kara to do some like legit makeup tutorial videos. Yes. But yeah. also play a beauty influencer type character. So comment below or just hit the like, you know. If you have name suggestions. We'll probably, we'll probably do it either way, but I mean, tell us. Yeah, that's a good one. Name suggestions. Um, maybe Bambi. That's the first name that just came to mind. Bambi does Bam. make. Bambi does makeup. Mm. No, you're not feeling it. Call her Pinky. I mean, that might be fitting. Okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> this character isn't really outside the box. I mean, her name is literally Neon. So I'm feeling super inspired today. <laughs> what about a playoff of Mary Kay? So me and Kara both used to sell Ooh, Mary Ooh, I like what that. What if we could play off of who Mary Kay is? But you're like a modern day YouTuber influencer, Mary Kay. Well, I can't be Mary Kay. <clears throat> obviously well I mean yes exactly that's why um that's why I said that like we it can't be Mary Kay um which by the way um yeah by the way if you haven't seen it one of my all-time favorite sketches that Conan O'Brien, who is literally like one of my all-time favorite comedians, loved him since I was a kid. He does a whole bit um, on when he goes to become a Mary Kay beauty consultant. And it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I just to, Well, let's see. Have you seen this? Uh-uh. Okay. I don't think I can show. The Mary Kay headquarters with the camera crew. You yeah, can do you can the clips as long as you're I'll providing do... commentary. Yeah, so I'm going to fast forward because I've actually watched this a lot over the years because I know at, like it's just a guaranteed laugh for so many reasons. So this is him first meeting his like upline, the lady who's going to bring him on. And he's in Texas. That they had died, but this brought them back to life in many <laughs> You're sure these are real? Should I be concerned the freckles are coming off? <laughs> Why would it be great? You just said it would be great if they came on. I thought you wanted them off. Why would you assume I want them on? <laughs> that helps with aging. I had the freckles all my life. If I had the freckles, I'd have the baby. <laughs> my freckles. You're the one that said, oh. Okay, so he does a little bit with her, and that's pretty funny. And then <laughs> this is usually the most replayed, it looks like. Or in movies, that cliche where a woman goes insane. He <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> looks so scary with lipstick on. So comment below if you think Kara should be a creepy, like a creepy overselling makeup influencer, but it gets better because he does the classic, like where they have to actually host a party with him B because that's like one of the first steps when you sell Mary Kay is you have to get people together to sell your products and let them. I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to preface too. Like, I don't know any like Midwestern, um, woman involved like not involved ever in some kind of mlm scheme <laughs> in some I, would, I, would agree, or other. I would agree i would like, agree like every midwest lady i feel like has some sort of connection to like beach yeah. body or like yeah anything tupperware's freaking back who knew tupperware pampered so, chef pampered chef all of, yeah 
I so, literally everybody I know it's it's like it's for a season for sure because you can get if you're good at selling things you can get discounts for your own like belong or your own things that you like but it is like really weird and culty also any MLM I've ever been a part of is really weird and culty thanks for that or I've had friends that are a part because you know selling it is one thing because you actually you really like the product usually there's decent products and like but the conferences and the way to way how you get involved in those is so actually this is a genius character because yeah no it is I, I I've so been, I, yeah I've been an admirer of Conan O'Brien like literally since I was like 12 years old so he's like at the top of my list for all types of comedy really he's just so adept um one of my favorite podcasts right now is Conan Needs a Friend that's really funny. Um, so he goes to the headquarters for a bit and he's still there. And then of course they have to go out and try the product. So this is him getting introduced at the party. Just thing. I don't think you need any cosmetics. Let's go. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. This is literally how it is. Yeah. And it's so weird. And he put on the little coat. Brush. I invite you to place a little bit of the cleanser on your hand. Do I'm not allowed? Let them do it. I've been told not to touch you. I've been told the only people that come are your friends and family usually, and they might be your friend or something, but they're just doing it out of pity. That's yeah. the only reason yeah. ever like pity slash faux support because it is so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing for everybody involved. Whoever. Because I'm here, you can have this for the absurd price of $9.99. I will <laughs> if anyone wants to hug me after the that. Absurd price. Sir, <laughs> <laughs> you can put it on your cheek. Yes. And then the forehead. You you know him. Oh yeah, right. Okay, get the cheekbones. This is I look okay. How about like here? Stay in the shadows. Yeah. Why can't I come in? in through the window looking like this. <laughs> Sorry, if you could hear my daughter scream just then. She's playing video games with her friends. So I I don't know if I can put, I don't, I don't completely agree with you because I do think that MLMs can be a powerful way for women to make money. And there's a lot of success stories from it. It's a do stepping stone. Do, step yeah. do I think but... that there's a lot of weird cultiness and a lot of times people just support because of pressure or it's a loved one. I do, but you know, I, I think, I, I think that that happens though with your kids, right? Like, I, or anybody they're trying I'm not to shit right now, but I happen to be part of an MLM right now. Exactly. So. Exactly. I sell, I sell, I should say sell. I don't think I've shared about it in over a year. I still wait, have some wait, Facebook wait, customers wait, that buy wait, from it. But it truly really is like, it is an awesome product. I've never found anything like it. And I'm excited about it. But I also am like, I don't know if I want to hawk makeup, mm -mm -mm. even though. Blow up the comments, blow up the comments right now when you're watching this. <laughs> you think you're being a hypocrite with a capital H. Listen to every, go but back and play this. She's so honest. Go replay so this. Honest. She's so honest. But then what does she tell you right now within the past minute? Actually, I'm currently a part of an MLM that sells makeup. But I do it for a discount. 
I do it honestly. I do it for my own discount, and that's all I care about. Like, I do not have anybody. That I sells know. It to me. I, I know. Care. And I appreciate your honesty. But it is. I appreciate products. your products. So Actually, good. yeah, I do need to reorder products from you in the new year. So that part, this segment, we're coming to a close with it. But I did want to just share some inspo from one of my all-time favorite sketches that. I thought might give you a little inspo for creating and developing this character. So y'all again, leave comments for what you think would be funny. The truth is my sister is actually an incredibly talented makeup artist. She worked at the Clinique counter since she was about 16 years old. Um, been doing makeup for a long time. So, and she's helped me. I was 18. Okay. My bad. Ages 18 to about 2022. Oh. It was, yeah. So I am getting ready to take my first bite of lunch and I want to tell people what I'm eating and I'll tell you what I'm eating. Might get a little messy and you might get a little jealous. Wait, I'm going to cut you off real quick. I'm going to cut you off real quick. Oh, should we do a thumb? Uh, one more thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to say, even though I sell this kind of makeup right now, mm -hmm. it's called Saint S E I N T. It's awesome. I might even put my link below just to be silly, but wait, should um, we do a I'm thumbnail like that? Yeah, I even feel like gross saying that right now. I just did we do gross. a thumbnail doing this? No, no. <laughs> okay, so um, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, go on. So I want to clarify my strong feelings about MLMs come from having actually sold makeup at a professional makeup counter at a nice department store, going through like actual classes and education to be able to work at Clinique. And then kind of like the throw, like the throw it all together feeling of an MLM. Like, oh, I just want you to sell so that I can actually make money off of you. I don't find it appealing. I like the product at this point in my life. If Clinique or like Estee Lauder or Lancome or anybody, anybody in the world would have a way, you know what? I should check into that. They probably have affiliate partners. Never mind. Go ahead, eat your lunch. Tell us all about it. Don't don't go look into that, viewers. We're just kidding. We want anybody to <laughs> tell us if you find out details. <laughs> um, okay. So this is a Chicago classic. That's why I want to share what it is. It's my leftovers from last night. Couldn't eat it all. Not at all because they have massive portions. Even with inflation, they are selling the, the finest quality of these products. And still, this was under $10 for a large entree. Okay. It's a classic Chicago take. And you can only find them in Chicago. They're called Buena Beef. It's they're the home of Chicago's original Italian beef, allegedly, right? All these places claim stuff. <laughs> so, but they do have very good meat products. I will tell you personally, when I'm getting ready to start my cycle, I really crave red meat. Me because, too. You no, know, big old iron. So, so ladies, um, here's where you get a little tidbit of health and maybe in this segment, you know, we're working, actually, I'm working in the new year to align my cycles with my creative content development, um, because there's a lot behind that. Kara is very adept at studying the moon cycles as a master gardener, blah, blah, blah. All that to say, when she's ready to start her cycle, Teeny needs a burger. Mama needs some sausage. Mama needs a meatball. And so a meatball I shall have. So today I'm enjoying leftover sausage and meatballs in a marinara sauce with red, yellow, and green bell peppers. Mwah. It's simple, but very well seasoned. Definitely a hearty winter. It's like 10 degrees here in Chicago today. So this is what I'm Love eating. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cool. bite in and it's probably going to gross you out. Kara actually really doesn't love mukbangs and doesn't love the sound of chewing, which is why many characters I develop on this channel are directly to annoy her. <laughs> Kara doesn't like whispering. I hate it. There's nothing that you will get punched in the face faster by doing than whispering in my ear. I've really never punched anybody ever in the face, but like <laughs> it is frightening to me. I don't when like it. Been now, away when she's what I do enjoy what I do enjoy, I think it's too intimate. 
that's what pisses me off about it. I do like it when my husband like has wow. like chewed on my ear or like not chew, but you know oh, what I'm saying. Okay. Like, Come on. Blow, this blow not, gently this into your is ear. Not. This isn't that kind of show. But it's an intimate act to whisper to somebody. I'm, like if it's a necessity, I would never go up into somebody's ear and go like maybe whisper from afar or be like this type of thing. But to go up and to whisper into somebody's ear is offensive. And it's like an assault on my humanity. I I somewhat agree with that because it's a personal space thing for me. It's a your hot You can breath. feel somebody's breath. and feel your hot ear. breath. Yeah. From that lens, I would agree with you. It's best for sensual situations only. Yes. With yes. an intimate Leave lover. With an yeah. intimate lover that yeah. you trust. Um, yeah. That's how yeah. I feel about whispering. Don't mm-hmm. do it if we're not at that level. And there's only one that's person right. at that level in my life. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he can breathe his hot breath on me all he wants. Okay. So, just so you know, that is what I'm eating in case any of you viewers were curious. I'll show you a little, I'll try to get a little up close here so you can see it. But buena beef. Oh, oh no. Oh. Okay, there we go. There you go. There you go. I mean, this was the whole thing. It was like $8 and I, I could literally only eat one meatball and one little sausage piece. Like this isn't even, I'm going to have it for dinner again. Well, but guess what? my cycle is just fit to be tied because she's getting her iron. She's either they have their own farm full of cows that they harvest their own beef to get those low prices or um, or it's it maybe right questionable now. quality of the beef that you're putting in your mouth Mm-mm. what no? I would say is I don't think they would have the staying power here in Chicago because they're just a Chicago chain if it wasn't the actual that's, real- that's how they can boast the real Italian beef of Chicago yeah, well, I'll, look okay. into it. I'll look into it. I mean, I did follow them on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe it's actually black beans. Can oh, I need to make that my mission in 2023. I want to develop the like a killer meatball recipe that is actually plant based, okay. but it actually tastes like meat somehow. I buy meatballs like that at a health food store and they taste really good. So you don't have to invent them. But but they actually hmm. taste like Italian meatballs and they're plant based. What buy brand you. is? Uh, I forget, but I'll buy you some sometime. Yeah, cool. Mm, okay, I, I'm not plant based by any means, but I do like to like occasionally cut out meat from my diet for a little while. Yeah, I'm you so. know I'm the same way, but currently too much of a meat eater. Not at this point in time, as you see. Although the the bell peppers are really good too. They're like a grilled bell pepper. Now we all, we also just had half of our remaining audience drop off and unsubscribe when I said all that about eating meat and the fact that we're talking about meat a lot because mm-hmm. some people find it super unethical. I understand it. Um, yeah, I I'm do. down with like learning about it, but also at this point in time. I also know all of my ancestors back to the beginning of time have also eaten meat as sources of protein other than certain populations that didn't have maybe access to large game and things like that. So I'm just going to put that out there. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel of humanity to make myself only like to eat plants in this life, but maybe here's, here's what I honestly think. Here's another honest opinion. Okay, this is going to be a whole other little chopped up segment. You got our honest opinions on MLMs. You got our honest opinions on um, a couple other things. Um, (laughs) I don't even remember. Um, But here's my honest opinion. I think it's like anything where it can become your idol and the thing. And it isn't actually serving the purpose that maybe it could be because so much of our journey in life is about energetics and what we bring in. So if I'm an incredibly, if I'm an incredibly like um, resentful individual and incredibly angry, but then I'm out here like, but also animal cruelty, I only I'm sorry, eat but that seems like, to be like it, a it, lot of people that right. talk about veganism, but I'm sorry. But then you're I'm becoming, it becomes this thing of almost, 
I want to stand out for something. Yeah. Um, and also that's like my niche or my niche. And I want to stand out for something, but then I want to have something to gatekeep and tell people, well, that's not really veganism. Um, Thanks like those be- type of things. And what I believe firmly about anything, whether it's veganism or a religion or whatever, we have different needs throughout our lives here on earth. They're going to, and, and that's why I believe so much in, and you all know, if you actually look at our real social media profiles or read anything we've actually published outside of sketch comedy stuff, you will know that part of our journey has been not only dismantling religious beliefs and systems that we grew up in, but also understanding our own cultural context as third culture kids. And furthermore, for me, this journey of not dissociating from my body, from previous traumas, this, this idea of understanding and actually being responsive to my body. And if you're really responsive to your body and the people who are, I am close to who are practicing vegans at times or vegetarians, they also go through periods of times where they're pescatarian or they do eat meat. And it really has to be sole purpose, just like anything, whether it's your calling or what you're believing as far as God or ancestors or whatever. I think it's like anything you go through phases in your life and there might be a, a period of a decade where it really speaks to you to make fresh juices every day and eat salads and eat plants and vegetables. But then that's also a privilege if you have access to be able to grow those things and consistently get those things for affordable prices. So there's a lot of factors beyond what many of us humans can control, even as far as access. So there's, I mean, what's honestly about living, like I live in a town of like less than 40,000 people. We are half Amish in my community. And it's like, there's a lot of crazy dynamics going on, but I do know like most people I live around like do garden and do grow their own organic produce. We hunt, like we live off the land as much as possible because for us and where we live, that's more ethical than having like food shipped from across the country. Like at a certain point, it's like, okay, you might be eating all the fruits and vegetables in the world, but if I'm situated here where I'm situated and I'm also consuming all that, that's coming from somewhere that's not anywhere close to me. And then environmentally speaking, like footprint wise, like Mm -hmm. I'm doing more harm by living that way. So So that's why I think it's also so important again, just to know, yeah, just because you decide to be vegan and say that you attract this whole circle of like vegan friends or whatever. Yeah. But if that doesn't work for you and you're not getting the nutrients you need and you end up having a health issue and you literally are supposed to be eating like protein or whatever like there's your body your particular body might need some kind of nutrient that you aren't able to provide with like plant-based means or whatever so it becomes we stop talking about yeah no it becomes the idol in the thing versus are you being responsive to what your needs are and all of that so anyways okay so but when Mariah Carey is awesome Mm -hmm. so let's get into the actual meat which is Mariah Carey that was what I was going to share my true opinions about and hear yours. Um, okay. I am using a new product. <laughs> it's from Menards. <laughs> because believe it or not. Why are your reactions so dramatic? It's literally me putting on a lotion. Okay. And actually you would really like this. So Menard sells a lot of like the Myers hand soaps and the natural J.R. Watkins brand. Yeah, it does. Exactly. Yeah. This is a cleansing hand elixir with cactus and calendula. Okay. Yeah. Also has a menthol scent. That's what I just put on that you were cool grossed out by okay so to mariah carey my true opinions should we let me actually take us to a clip okay oh boy she so here's why i'm bringing this up honestly is um, she performed, if you remember in 2016, going into 2017 
at, on the big stage in New York for New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's when she started to get a whole lot of flack and it's still considered one of her most epically like awful or failed performances. I never heard about this. So I have, that's why I know like there's ongoing oh. jokes and memes about her, even though she's actually the queen of Christmas like she, that is one of her kind of monikers that she's known for. But let me take us down memory lane before we talk about this, because what I heard advertised the other day on XM radio, I was listening to a station on there in the car and it was a little commercial from her and it was literally, Hey, can't wait to be performing at new year's Eve in New York this year. So they're having her back to the big stage as the main event. But this was Wait, the so what happened here initially. Go down memory lane. This is where what got her all the flap. So we'll just say, if I did I'm not sure I understand what just went on, but. So they try to do like, because she's queen of Christmas, because it's right literally before New Year's, they try to give her like the main stage and they were doing, you hear in the background, what she's supposed to be singing, like a big kind of, um, what's it called? Compilation of some of her biggest hits and uh -huh. her performing. Well, this is where she got a rap for, and, and you, I mean, tabloids have long reported that you should get out of this screen oh. real quick so we can see you I have, sorry, have long reported that she's a diva and she'll show up like two or three hours late to when she's supposed to for things like all that. She is a diva and she is right. So, yeah. so this was her last big stage. And then you saw a uh, memes. Like I sent you one the other day where she's being pushed like that. Yeah. She started getting and she had also given birth to Nick Cannon's twins so I think there was a time period where she was healing and also getting plastic yeah. injuries, all that kind of stuff right so there's all this surrounding her but I wanted to share my true opinions of her and then I want to get your true opinions and honestly okay. what I want most is subscribers to drop your true opinions in the comments like I want to get a conversation started about it because this kind of also goes back to like, how far back do you hold people accountable, right? It kind of almost goes back to like a cancel culture thing, yes. but almost in the opposite lens where, you know, at what point do you give people grace and say like, I can tell by her facial expressions, she was mortified and like, she could barely stay on that stage. It took everything for her to be making yes. snarky jokes because yes. she's like, I'm the best in the world. And so here's what my true opinion is. Okay. I think that because she actually, like she's done a lot of lip syncing stuff and she's also gotten flack for that after that performance. And I think she got spooked by it, right? So a lot of times you don't see her performing live or people mm -hmm. give her flack about that. I think when you're an artist that began as she did and rose up the ranks, and has proven she actually has talent. She's not out here like a little, um, I don't even know these TikTokers names that are getting record deals. And I don't know why. It's like what we talk about with like New York Times bestsellers. Yeah, now people pay off PR people to make the bestseller list. They don't do it like they used to with books. Okay. They buy their own so, books. Right. We know all this, right? Like, just like even here, we're not going through a studio and trying out for SNL. We're doing our own little sketch comedy stuff. It's accessible. And that's great. But the reality is Mariah came up like 
she has the chops and she has the gifts and the skills it'd be different if you had never heard her hit those high notes if you had never heard fantasy if you'd never heard all the different hit after hit after hit after hit and the massive amount of wealth she's accumulated from her savvy before there was JLo before there was Beyonce before there was really even a lot of artists she's a third culture kid as well right like interracial parents like that's that's also like such an American quote-unquote story at least when we were growing up and so for me my opinion is you can do whatever you want Mariah and you should still have the main stage that's right I agree because here's the thing too like well first of all she was the artist that like actually inspired me to actually sing out loud like mm-hmm. in my bedroom by myself mm-hmm. with my little Walkman or my stereo or whatever I happened to be listening to it I had all of her albums growing up hero. like hero she was like my voice lesson she was my first voice teacher like to be able to do mm-hmm. some of the dy- dynamic like vocalization that she does that taught me so much as a young girl and then going into my actual like opportunities in life to sing like that that was powerful for me so yeah hell yeah she can do whatever the hell she wants first of all second of all most of the music coming out right now I'm sorry but you're digitally generating most of that shit with pre-recorded um you pick a loop that you want to use for the backtrack of your sound or your voice or whatever that the, you didn't actually create with an instrument. You don't know shit about reading music. You don't know shit about like uh, vocal techniques. You probably synthesize your voice or auto tune your voice in some way, shape or form. So don't even get me started on the artistry of music and how it's gone down the shitter in the last five to 10 years, particularly <laughs> first of all. Second of all, yes, that woman was in that studio recording the, that track for real. And if she's going to be on stage dancing, I'm sorry, there is nobody that performs live in dances like some of these artists do from back in the day that doesn't have, they might be singing along, but it's not, you're not hearing their primary. If you enjoy that kind of indie music vibe, yeah, you go to a club and like you listen to a concert or a concert hall or whatever. Uh, an acoustic version of whatever that's and not that her, type of and, performance and you want her in the dead cold of winter to look super cute and snatched in five or six inch heels at a couple of years Wait, after people giving, were, a couple people of years were criticizing after, her look in that a couple years after giving birth to twins people were criticizing how she kind of walked around stage I'd be doing the same thing. You don't want to fall. Oh, you're your stage face. was also wiggling, looking at the setup of all that janky yep. shit. Yep. I mean, maybe the stage was like literally shaking or something. And she was like, oh, this isn't going to work. You could tell by the thing she was saying that there was so much more context don't, to the yeah. whole situation. That, that obviously did she did or did not happen. So she can't like bash whoever it is that invites mm-hmm. those people to perform yeah. because of future opportunity so yeah she's not going to say it she's not going to talk shit about it mm-hmm. come on like I'm never going to complain about somebody who like I if I couldn't do it I'm not complaining yep. I'm not that's it yeah it's the that's classic it. I don't see you out there yeah like what do you like then just say I don't like Mariah Carey or whatever just don't right. even just just don't li- or don't listen to her music again then don't listen to it. so anyways those are my true opinions just because you st- I'm canceling all the people that <clears throat> talk bad shit about her you that's still, what I'm you still hear you still just hear flack you know about uh, different performances over the years not just that one but different performances where she's lip synced or whatever Okay, do you have an octave range of literally like 10 octaves and one of the best ranges in the entire universe? Okay. And also that's not like a daily situation. You have no. to get your voice in prime, like has to be the perfect day, yeah. no shit in your throat. Like it has to, no milk having been had for the past week. Like it has to be the perfect absolute conditions. You're not guaranteed. That's all like a once, not a once in a lifetime. I'm sure she can do it more than that, but she's not doing that every day. No. And also there, I don't know. I just have a soft spot for her. She's a third culture kid. She had, she has a sister who's an addict. Like she just, 
she's just got a really like human story and I don't know. So cancel, I just, you've said something about cancel culture. How far do you go back and give people grace? That was I my think question. You have to look like this crap about people pulling out, you know, stuff comedians did 30 years ago or even 10 years ago. In some instances, we live in a different time now than we did five to 10 years ago that before me too existed. You know, we live in different times as with everything you have to look at whatever you're learning about this person in the context within the culture that they were from and they were in in the moment because at that time it was acceptable to say and to do and to whatever some of these things it was acceptable and we accepted that as a culture as a culture just like currently we accept certain things in our culture that i'm sure five years from now are going to be like oh oops that was not really yeah. so good for the human psyche to be accepting this into our practices as humans mm -hmm. so I, yes i have so, one to end on i have a very poignant one to end on and i don't know how it's going to turn out in the comments and i don't even know if you and i want to get into discussion i really want to put it out there for subscribers because the mariah carey opinion it was actually bait for me to be able to show this and end with this, because I think it's something that is really worth all of us talking about, including myself. And I'm just as guilty as anybody. When we're in supercharged conversations, we make decisions about who we want to write off. And I think that sometimes it's warranted and sometimes it's not. And sometimes we get it wrong. But then it is that question, you know, it's been asked about Michael Jackson. It's been asked about R. Kelly. It's been right from different lenses. At what point do you separate the art from the things they did? Or can you get past that? Like, should you get past that with Columbus? Because Columbus did some good things, but ultimately he was a rapist and like murderer. Like those or are Bill the Cosby. things. Of what? <laughs> Bill Cosby. Or Bill Cosby. Yeah. I have a really hard time with Bill Cosby because like we grew up watching the Cosby show. It's super important <laughs> to like buy impression of like the world and like how things worked and family and stuff like that like that show was super influential to me and I was never into his stand-up right. comedy ever but like mm -hmm. I didn't even really know until my like recent adult years that he even did stand up like I knew him from the Cosby show yeah, yeah. and like I'm not they it's also you can't really find the Cosby show anymore I don't no, know. I haven't looked on Amazon was, and it stuff. It was the like, first time it's that you also great. saw. Oh. It was also one of the first times that mainstream America had the setting and representation of a middle class Black yeah. woman on yeah. primetime yeah. television for everyone to be exposed to. Because that is the other reality of what it brought was that exposure because you're coming out of civil rights movement, you're coming out of segregation, you're coming out of like years and years and years of racism. It was so important racism. for the time so, that we were in. So here's the flip yeah. side of it. And this is what I want people to sit with because again, I've been sitting with it. That's why I'm throwing it out there. And Kara knows this about me, but we're going to keep reminding people, we have a lot of depth. We have a lot of things to share. And we also have a lot of purpose in this life. So it's very hard for me to ever separate the fact of any type of work or movements that I'm involved in from what we're experiencing, like on the sketch therapy channel, this whole channel was birthed out of deep, deep grief from both of us. So that's the other thing is that it's really hard to separate and, and comics historically have actually been the ones that through laughter, through trying to poke fun at things have been able to bring healing and kind of yeah. almost set the tone for, for what people are. They provide a sense of philosophy, about. a sense of philosophy that like people won't really read in books anymore because of the willingness to do so. But mm -hmm. I do really think like comedians now that are relevant are relevant because they're able to provide some sort of construct or um, yeah, construct around a life philosophy, if yeah. that makes sense. Whereas we, we don't have another conduit or platform. There are plenty of people who make their green on, um, you know, 
shock culture and like trying to like you know scare people fear tactics into like different things that they're talking about and you know people do respond to those things and that fanaticism and that really extreme stuff because it feels like oh you're part of a group but yet I think comedians like often have this really distinctive and important voice and place in our culture to be like yeah we're gonna call this what it is we're also gonna like make light of it so it doesn't like consume us and consume our culture and then we're also going to talk about the laughter on the other side of it yeah that makes sense yeah so. so here I will let you know I have not watched this clip however a couple weeks ago the first time I read about this this story just broke actually three weeks ago but I have not watched this specific clip I read about it through um, one of my friends she writes an education column and she wrote about it actually the person you just met this morning so she wrote a column about this and essentially, so if y'all remember back back to specifically 1957, when you see the historical records and photos, the black and white photos of the sit-ins at Woolworth and other place in the South, where black people were peacefully protesting by sitting in and saying, "We we you're not going to deny us service at these restaurants. We're people, we're humans. And so it was a peaceful way of that. And you have these photos of all the mobs usually of young white men who were the ones yelling slurs at the black folks who were peacefully protesting. One of those photos reveals a 16 year old Jerry Jones, who is the modern day Dallas Cowboys owner. So I haven't watched this, this is clip. A fascinating piece of reporting yeah. that we're going to talk about now. We're going to start with this photo. It's from September 9, 1957. It shows Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones among a crowd of white students trying to keep black students from integrating at an Arkansas high school. This is a Washington Post reporting. It reports that Jones, who was 14 at the time, could be seen standing a 14. few yards from where the six black students were being jostled and repelled with snarling racial slurs by ringleaders of the mob. So joining us now, sports and feature columnist at the Washington Post. Sally we don't need to watch this whole thing. Sally. I think I already have my opinion on it. Yeah, so that's that's what I want to know though too. From <laughs> did you hear that? He goes, she, he goes. She said, "I don't want to watch that shit." <laughs> so, but I'm putting it out there because because of part of what I do for a living is racial healing conversations. I hear so many narratives, and I taught and Kara hears a lot about this. But you hear so many narratives about who should be held accountable and how you're naming things and all of these things. Right. I, I, that it just goes back to what I was saying, even about the Bill Cosby's and R Kelly's of the world. At what point do you see this person as this is a person having a human experience. This is a person who is a product of their cultural context and their environment, as well as their own decision-making at a certain point. And at, you know, or like at what point does that stop? Right. Because we all, whether it has to do with race or gender or ableism or just mistakes we've made in life, we all have dirt. We all have junk in the trunk. We That's all got thing. baggage. There's such a thing as healing through like some real hard shit because most of the people out there doing things in the world that are hateful or at the, at the very worst um, harmful and then also at the very least, like ne just negative, just putting out negativity. Um, those people in some way have been hurt themselves. And so like as a mom, I'm always trying to think about I'm raising two boys and a young girl. Like I'm trying to think about the grace that I provide to them as they learn different things, because nothing is going to cause me to write them off. And if their actions procure some sort of um, response negative, positive, whatever, it's a product of like who they are in that moment that made them do whatever that they did. So my job as a parent is to try to direct them into a space of operating in a healed way. So you're putting out good stuff into the world that's positively influential. There are so many people out there, but because of shame or whatever else, they're hiding 
their hurts and their pains and internalizing all that. And so, yeah, the shit they're putting out in the world and doing to other people is really crappy. You see it at a micro level when you go to the grocery store and somebody's freaking out over a price on something or whatever. Yes. Yep. Those people the are parking not space. people. <laughs> That's on a little mini level. They may have just been having a tough time in their marriage and that's how they're acting out in public. Like you don't know what people go through. You never know what people go through. So the worst of the worst of the worst people in the world, I can always extend a sense of like, yes, but we're all from my, and from my purview, we are all children of God, period. End of discussion. We are all afforded infinite grace, period. That's it. Mm-hmm. Second of all, that particular situation that you just showed, mm-hmm. like, first of all, he was standing towards the back of the crowd. We don't know how he got smushed in the back of that crowd. Number one, I don't know Jerry Jones. I don't know anything about him. He could be a raging racist like right now. And then that's a different story and a different conversation to have. We don't know how he got smushed in that room. Maybe he was there as an ally. We don't know. And he was also, he, also 14. he was 14 years old. And think about we all know that we are influenced by who we are around and if it's the popular thing to do we're all doing this and if you don't do this you're scum of the earth or oh actually then you're with them or whatever whatever the case may be we know those conversations go on so the likelihood that a 14 year old whose brain is 10 11 years from being fully developed is going to have the wherewithal to like take a firm stance in that scenario in that yeah. that really live like fraught environment no, it's not happening. So no, you look at his facial expression itself in the two seconds that I saw the picture, he's just like deer in headlights a little bit. Like he's not one of the guys that front on, goes, what am I doing here? Like, we don't know anything of the context unless you were he actually- might not have had any context, the t- other- context of what was going to be happening. The like, other, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the other, so the other part of that though, but that also happens all of the time where people are accomplices, right? Or specifically then if we want to flip the other lens and look at it, it's also why the atrocity of like Emmett Till and so many other unspoken names was awful because they were children. They were 13 years old. Like, like it's the same token in some respects, not because Emmett Till ever had a choice. That's a situation where that woman, that woman is still alive. And that state didn't go take her into custody. And I know that woman's about 90 years old, but she's wrong. And I do strongly feel that is wrong. Like, like they should have had her arrested years ago. And because he, she is, is exactly, I'm breaking this down for viewers because that's the difference, right? Because then to your point earlier, before you just have a reaction or a comment or an opinion, take some time to process and at least try to understand the situation before you're understand in- what you're looking at <laughs> like yeah. at a very minimal right level. so anyways I think it's just always an important practice anytime you're watching any news stories but I want to throw that up there because to me it's all the same thing whether we're talking about Mariah Carey and what people think of her and if she's this or that people will always have an opinion always have something to say at the end of the day, all we can measure is our own hearts, our own mind, our own soul, and how we're showing up. Because every time we speak in judgment of someone else, we're just projecting something that we haven't resolved within ourselves. Um, so I, I just wanted to put that out there because I think it's a good food for thought, especially as we go into the holidays, especially as you might be around people with different viewpoints than your own. Um, just let's let's be thinking. So any laughs? Before we sign off, though, you Man, know, you sketchy. A heavy, heavy. Oh, I left you on a poignant note that sketch therapy is deep. You know, it's it's not always just the. It way. Is, but now go look at all of our other videos and laugh a little bit because that was super heavy. Yeah, the point of our whole sketch therapy library—it's meant to be like some sort of commentary on a certain, you know, archetype of person or somebody we encounter in our in our lives at some point or often depending on the case like it's meant to spark conversation in different directions you don't have to take it that deep otherwise it's just like goofy shit that you know our most engagement so far always has to do with very surface level how we look that's pretty much all of our engagement so far is is the look 
right? Like reactions to, oh, the lips. Oh, what's going on here? Like, I don't yeah, know. I guess that's true. I didn't really think about that, but that's so probably true. But we also haven't gotten into real deep storylines with any of the characters or anything like that. Um, maybe Ted. He's probably, Ted is probably the character that we know the most about. He doesn't have a lot of depth, but we know the most about him, right? I'm trying to think, think through what details or backstory people would even know about. Vibrant has a backstory. She tells about it because she, she, she likes to brag about being the model for Minnie Musk. I think we are starting to attract more viewers that are, are like, our our niche and our people in different ways because yeah I don't necessarily want people enjoy I mean they can enjoy the channel but like the <laughs> people that will get most out of it are the people who are like to think like like to think about stuff like it's right, not just right. mindless whatever that you just look at and consume like we want you to have some sort of a, a thought about whatever it is Art yeah. should be commentary on different things. And like, that's what we're trying to do. So yeah, subscribe for my birthday and for my Christmas present. Hey, should we do a thumbnail? <laughs> you want to do a video? I, if I take the background off, you're going to be in this video. Don't take it off. I won't take it off. I know you don't want to be on video with a do-rag on. <laughs> okay um maybe you do are you sure i'll give you one more chance oh that's a no <laughs> as he tears off with his drill <laughs> okay um do we want to do a thumbnail pose though before we close out i'm gonna pull different facial expressions from different parts of the video because you can't really get it all in one the way it's like laid out so maybe you can this is my favorite part about wearing these bob wigs, though. Ooh. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave your name um, suggestions for this lady right here, the pink-haired lady yeah. that's going to do makeup tutorials and tell gossip stories. The would-be yeah. beauty influencer with all the hot goss on celebrities. Yeah. You should report on only small-time celebrities, like, like B-list or c-list or even just random right. people because i think it'd just be funny like you're obsessed with all these people that aren't actually <laughs> <laughs> but to you they're like everything or just choose two really random people that we actually like like no you should be like all you discuss is theo vaughn like Ron Funches. Different comedians. And, and Andrew Santino. Like you do commentary on comedy. No, I thought about that, but I wasn't sure if that was this character or not. Maybe I'll, I'll not. think about it. We'll see. Hey, um, thanks, Sketchies. We love you. Is that really a thing? Do you think we should call people Sketchies if they follow this channel? Yeah. That's what our mascot dog is named. So, you know, the truth is. Okay, let me leave us on a high note and a cliffhanger because next time we record, there might be another guest. Here's why. Oh, I've been heavy into dog shopping. Okay, Thaddeus and I want to get a puppy for the new house yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Um, I am really considering naming this puppy Sketchy, <gasps> and we oh. could actually have a legit mascot dog who you see his growth yeah. and journey here every time you guys have lunch or coffee with us on the sketchy sister yeah. this is when we talk a little bit more about the real life stuff so Kara I like yes, it. this is the in real life so yeah sometimes I'm gonna bring up some little topics not not usually like that but that seemed applicable you know to for it's okay the we can go deep but only for a moment yeah, only a moment. So yeah, you guys also leave comments with that if you think that I should try to convince Thaddeus to name our future puppy Sketchy. I, I mean, personally really going don't all in. To me, to me, that is more all in than getting a tattoo of like Sketch Sisters. Naming oh. your naming your pet a family member. I'm not getting a tattoo at this. I'm time. not either, but I feel like that's almost a bigger step. <laughs> to name a dog sketchy no I and disagree. also I don't want my dog to be a sketchy dog I think it'll do the opposite 
I think it'll make him really sweet. Yeah. Okay. Well, the one, one of the puppies I'm really interested in right now, the given name right now is Sublime. Ooh. I actually kind of like it. It's kind of cute. And it means like grandeur and like just so exquisite. Hey, it's better than Ricky Bobby. Yeah, that's the actual given name of one of Kara's dogs. <laughs> I didn't pick it. It's a hunting dog and the breeders named it. And it says on his paperwork, Ricky Bobby, unfortunately. Ricky Bobby! But also fortunately, because it was one of the most hilarious things I've ever experienced your dog has already been featured in a magazine yeah a hunting magazine he's a designer dog almost he's just talented I wouldn't call him designer he's just talented like he's my husband talented at like a, a couple key things and that's it <laughs> that's that's your dog for sure yeah he's great can you okay. tell him bluffing <laughs> yeah I could tell you're really trying to be a fan of your bigger dog your your husband's hunting dog but mm, he's growing on me little by little he just had a second birthday so he's only technically 14 in human years I gotta give him grace just like I give 14 year olds in real life grace you know did he I didn't hear you talk much even when you had him as a puppy did he ever have any major accidents in the house no no, well, well, well I'll tell you the epic accident that is a once in a lifetime. Probably nobody's ever had it happen before. Possibly, maybe a couple people in the world. What this has happened? He has a crate that we put him in, like when he's in the house, mm -hmm. and so we like it's kind of in a corner of our living room, and he had a massive blowout <gasps> uh, onto the walls, massive, in the middle of the night. When was this? This was probably six months ago. I never heard this story, but apparently yeah. he must had like a little virus or something. Something. He always eats yeah. the same. Well, unless he ate something, yeah. but he always eats the same. Like he doesn't really know. Like that. We still don't know what it was, but that was oh. the only. But yeah, I think maybe he asked, had a couple pee oh, accidents. Oh, wait. So that's why your house smells like shit. She's, she's not a messing around my house smells like Christmas and cranberries. Okay, you don't even get defensive if it's not true, Kara. Well, sometimes it does smell like dogs. You wanted me to end on a. You wanted me to end on a funny note. There it is. That's why your house smells like shit. <laughs> Okay. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit like, make sure you share with other people who are like, oh, they're kind of weird and funny and cute. We like them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye.